Hey guys, it's Amy. In today's video tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to paint the Vindictors from the new Dominion box set. I'm going to be painting them in the Anvils of the Held and Hammer scheme, which is the black and gold primarily colour scheme. So I'm now going to move on to base coating the paving slabs on the base. So I'm using Mechanica Standard Grey here. It does cover really nicely and pretty much covers in one. I also get the little rocks on the base as well with this. Um, you'll notice that there's, there is one that I do miss out, but I do catch it before the next one. So just go around and base coat all of the rocks with Mechanica Standard Grey and all of the slabs. And then we can move on to the next base coat. So I'm now going to um, base coat all of the sand and the dirt on the base and here I'm using Dryad Bark. So I'm now going to apply this Galvorbank Red to the plume and the weapon handle. So that's the plume and the weapon handle all base coated. You'll see that there's a weapon handle there just on that little dagger that he's got on his back. So don't forget about that. So moving on now to base coating the gold, um, I'm using Retributor Armour. So I'm going to go around and base coat all of the gold details on the model. Um, that's basically all the trim, all the kind of uh, ornate kind of um, detailing on the model. So now I'm going to move on to base coating the silver parts. Um, I'm using Vallejo Metallic Air Gun Metal. Um, I've already got that on the palette there. It's one of my favourite silver paints. Um, it's an airbrush paint, so it's already pre-thinned. Um, I just have a dab of water on the brush just to add a bit of moisture. What we're going to do now is just add one final metallic colour to the model using Iron Warriors, which is a, a darker metallic colour from Citadel. And we're going to base cut the back of the shield with this. So that's the back of the shield all blocked in there with that darker metallic. So what I'm going to do now is move on to painting the belt and the straps on the model and I'm going to use Rhinox Hide for this. So here you can see the belt and the straps are all base coated with Rhinox Hide. And now we're going to move on to painting the skull on the base and also the parchment. So I'm going to use Rakar Flesh here. This is going to be the main base colour for the skull. However, it's just going to serve as an initial base coat for the parchment, which we're going to cover with a layer paint next. So here you can see the skull on the base is fully base coated and also the parchment with Rakar Flesh. So now we're going to use a Shabti Boom and we're going to base coat this fully over all of the parchment. Here you can see the parchment is fully covered with a Shabti Boom. And what we're going to do now is move on to the white detail. So I'm going to use Grey Sea for this. And now here is the model, fully base coated, all of the areas picked out and we're ready to move on to the shading next. Um, I really personally prefer painting in this method, getting all the base coats on, because then it means you can neaten up any areas and everything is at the same stage. So let's move on now to the shading. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying this tutorial. If you're new to Siege Studios, we are a premium miniature painting service with over 50 artists. Here at Siege, we offer four painting levels, ranging from our bronze premium gaming quality up to our platinum competition standard. For your free quote today, follow the link in the description of this video. I'm now going to move on to shading the model and I'm gonna start off with the gold. So I'm going to use a contrast paint. I'm gonna use Magos Purple. It's a really nice uh, rich purple colour and it works really lovely on golds. So here you can see I apply it onto the gold to make sure not to have too much on the brush and 
at first it doesn't really make that much of an obvious difference and that's exactly the sort of consistency you want to go for. So here you can see that the gold is shaded. However, what I want to do now is I want to add a little bit more purple to strengthen those recesses and to begin to build up the effect that I'm after. I want a gold that looks quite um, rich, um, perhaps maybe worn type of gold, um, aged gold. So I'm going to add a little bit more purple to it. So I'm going to use Magos Purple here. I'm using it straight from the pot. I'm not going to thin it down, but I'm applying it to the palette just so that I can control how much paint I have in the brush. So here you can see the gold is a lot more purple looking than it was before. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a null oil and I'm going to shade the metallics and also the leather. So that's the belt and the straps on the model. So here you can see all the metallic areas and the leather areas are all shaded. So now I'm going to move on to shading the parchment and I'm going to use Skeleton Horde and this is what we're going to use to run into those recessed um, letters that are on the parchment. So now we're going to move on to shading the basing. So we're going to use Agrax Earthshade. So now I'm going to apply some shading to the white um, icon on his shoulder pad and I'm going to use Dawnstone here. So here you can see the white detailing on the shoulder pad is now dry. As I say, it's quite subtle, um, but when we highlight it, it'll work. So what I'm finally going to do now, final shading, is I know I'd said previously that I didn't think I was going to shade the plume and the weapon handle, but I actually changed my mind. <laughs> um, and that, but I'm just going to add quite a subtle shade here. So I've used two lots of Lamy Medium there. I'm just adding a small portion of Null Oil. And we're just going to lightly um, shade down these areas. So here you can see the weapon handle and the plume are now dry. So now the model is all shaded and we're ready to move on to highlights. So the first thing we're going to highlight on the model is the parchment. So just using a shabti burn here and what we're going to do is just use this to neaten up any areas where the wash had overspilled. I've thinned the paint down with water here so it's quite a thin consistency and I'm going to use this to glaze outwards from the shaded area into the mid-turn area. So here you can see the neatened up parchment on the shield and around the weapon. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to add a final highlight to these areas and I'm going to use Pallid Witch Flesh. So here you can see the finished parchment on the shield and also around the weapon handle. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to begin to highlight the leather on the model. So first of all I'm going to use Rhinox Hide, apply that to my palette and I'm also going to get some Gawthor Brown and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the, these two paints in a 50-50 ratio. I'm going to start by drawing ever so slightly small lines all along the length of the straps and the belt and also that sword as well. So here you can see that initial pass on the model. You can see that sort of darker rhinox hide in the middle there. So now we're going to just use Gothor Brown and we're essentially going to repeat the previous step. Finally with the leather we're going to add a final edge highlight using Bane Blade Brown. Uh, run it along the edges of the straps and the belt and also the sword as well, just to create a little bit of an edge highlight. And what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to painting the weapon handles. So I'm going to do some dry brushing here. So I'm going to do a first initial coat of Screamer Pink. 
So here you can see the Screamer Pink dry brushed onto the handle there. It's um, quite subtle. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply a second highlight using the same method of dry brushing. I'm going to use Pink Horror here. There you can see the finished weapon handle. And now I'm going to move on to painting the plume. So using Screamer Pink, I'm going to apply some edge highlights to the plume. So now I'm going to move on to painting the armour. And I'm going to add a first highlight using Dark Reaper. And so here you can see the Dark Reaper applied to all of the edges around the model. So using Fenrisian Grey, I'm going to apply that edge highlight to all of those edges. So here you can see that Fenrisian Grey has been applied to all of the edges of the Dark Reaper. Is We're going to use that Dark Reaper and essentially we're going to cut back in to all of that Fenrisian Grey. So what I like to do is I like to add a little bit of a glaze to glaze back into the base coat to soften that initial chunky highlight. So here you can see the finished armour and that Fenrisian Grey is looking a little bit sharper now and I'm a lot happier with it. So what I'm going to do now, as you may have noticed, I've uh, completely missed out the face when I was highlighting and that's because what I'm going to do is I'm going to freehand on a skull face, well, essentially a skull mask. So here I'm going to apply uh, a shabti bone, a base coat that onto the front face plate. So here you can see that a shabti bone is blocked in on the face. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to block out, I'll begin to block out the area that will be the teeth at the bottom. And I'm going to use Rhinox Hide for this. And here you can see that Rhinox Hide has been applied. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a Shabti Burn again just to pick out the teeth. I'm just going to just do small little uh, squares essentially um, at the bottom, making sure you leave a little bit of a line of Rhinox Hide above and in between each tooth. Now I'm going to shape the skull a little bit more and this is just using a bad and black to cut back into the Ashabti burn and also using a Ashabti burn as well just to create that traditional skull appearance. So here you can see the skull mask is now drawn out and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to add some depth by adding some shading. So I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade and Lamian Medium so here you can see the Agrax has been applied. As you can see, it's quite um, harsh at the moment, but that's fine because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply a glaze of a Shabti Burn over that. So here you can see that that shading is not as dark as it was, not as harsh as it was previously. It's a little bit um, blended into the Shabti Burn now. And I'm going to further strengthen that now by using Pallid Witch Flesh. So I'm going to use this to apply edge highlights to those prominent areas, including the brow, above the eye and the nose. And so here is the finished skull mask. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on to painting the gems on the model. You can see I've already picked out the areas that they're going to be with black, so that's on. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a second highlight to all of these gems. I'm going to do this using Gene Stealer Purple. So here you can see all the gems are picked out with that Gene Stealer. And now I'm going to add a final third dot highlight onto all of these gems using Slanesh Grey. And here you can see all of the finished gems. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick out all of the softer portions um, on the armour. I'm going to do this using Eshin Grey and here you can see those finished areas picked out in that softer material. So here I'm using um, Elven Gold by Scale 75 which is a really nice bright gold colour. So here you can see the gold is looking a lot more shinier and for the, for the gold essentially I just picked out the areas that were still sort of showing as retributor armor as previously and that helped me guide where to place that elven gold 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Citrine Alchemy from Skill 75. And I'm going to use this to apply an edge highlight to all of the edges on the gold. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply a final edge highlight to all of the metallics. So I'm using Vallejo Metallic Air Silver, which is a nice bright silver. And I'm going to use this to apply an edge highlight to the scale mail, the belt buckle and the spear head as well. Here you can see all of the metallics picked out. And finally, to finish off the model, I'm going to apply a white edge highlight to those white details. I'm going to use this uh, Vallejo Cold White model colour. It's a nice white colour. I'm just going to um, run the brush along these white areas just to pick out the edges. So just to finish off the model in its entirety, we're now going to finish off the base. And as you remember previously, we'd washed it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply a dry brush of Dawnstone. So next I'm going to apply a wash of Athernian Camo Shade over all of the rocks and also the dirt as well. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to again pick out the rocks primarily with a dry brush of Dawnstone. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to build up that mossy effect. So using Strachan Green I'm going to apply this to my palette and I'm going to apply this to the um, to the paving slabs. So here you can see that mossy effect starting to develop on the paving slabs there. I'm just going to further enhance this by adding some darker spots using Castellan Green. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a colour into the recesses of in between the paving slabs and I'm going to thin down Steel Legion Drab and run this into the cracks in between the rocks. And with that mossy effect built up on the rocks, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to apply a final dry brush of Dawnstone on the rocks just to pick them out a little bit more than the dirt and it just picks up those edges as well. And finally what I'm going to do to finish off the base is I'm going to apply some uh, grass tufts and the tufts that I'm going to use are Gamers Grass. So when the tufts are fully dry on the base, I use some tweezers just to pluck out some strands. To further blend it into the base, I'm going to use a Grax Earth Shade and just give them a wash. Um, this dulls them down, it also makes them look a little bit dirty uh, as well, like they've got dirt or mud in them. Uh, and it dulls it down and just blends them into the base a little bit better. So here is the finished Vindicta painted in the Anvils of the Held and Hammer scheme. I really, really enjoyed painting this. Um, these new Stormcast models are super nice. I'll reiterate what I said at the beginning. I think they're the best Stormcast models they've made so far. They're really fun, really nice and simple to paint. Um, so I'm really looking forward to adding the rest of the unit to this prime. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you learned some useful uh, tips and tricks. Um, once again, thank you as always for all of your support and I'll see you in the next one.